So in this video, we're going to be looking at the theory behind transition metals as well as how to write the electron configuration for your transition metals itself. Now, if you look at a D-block element, right, we say we've got an element that has the highest energy subshell in the D subshell itself. Now, D-block elements themselves, right, they can often be confused with transition elements. Remember, a transition element is going to be a D-block element, but in this case, right, when it forms an ion, right, that ion itself is going to have a partially filled D subshell, right? The keyword here is ion and partially. Think about your D subshell. You can have 10 electrons in there. If it's going to be completely filled, right, it's going to be 10 electrons inside of its D subshell. If it's going to be empty, you're going to have no electrons in the D subshell, but if it's going to be partially filled, you're going to have anywhere between one to actual nine electrons in the actual subshell itself, right? So that's something that you have to remember. Now, when we look at our D block elements, we can't refer to all of them as transition metals, and we need to be aware, right, that their ions that they actually form is going to be determining whether it's a transition metal or not. Now, most D block elements, they usually form plus two ions itself, and this is because they lose two electrons from the 4S subshell. Now, in some cases, they can actually lose more electrons, and they can lose these electrons from the 3d subshell because if you were to look at the 4s and the 3d subshell they're going to be very close in terms of energy thinking back to year one chemistry now when we look at scandium and zinc right these are d block elements but they're good examples of d block elements that are not forming transition metals itself now scandium and zinc they're not transition metals because they don't actually have any stable ions with a partially filled d subshell now when we look at scandium scandium actually forms a three plus ion and when we look at zinc zinc is going to form a two plus ion now when you look at scandium right the reason why scandium doesn't actually form a transition metal is because when you lose these three electrons from the original 21 to form scandium three plus you do not have a partially filled d subshell if you were to look at zinc zinc which has 30 electrons if zinc loses two electrons, right, you don't actually form, right, a partially filled D subshell again. And so, right, you also know that this is not going to be a transition metal ion, although it still is a D block element in itself. So looking back to year one in terms of electron configuration, right, we remember that our electrons, they're going to fill in order of lowest energy to highest. They're going to fill up unpaired, then paired for the same energy level. And then if you were to remove electrons, we remove them from the highest energy level apart from 4S, where 4S, you need to know that it's added on before 3D and removed before 3D as well. Now, looking at this example over here, right, with iron, iron, we know it's going to have 26 electrons in itself. And we know that we're going to start from from the bottom of this little energy level diagram and we're going to work our way up so we go one and then two there's two electrons done so far there next energy level right it's going to be three and then four and then when we get to p it's going to go five six seven unpaired then we're going to start to pair eight nine and then ten itself as well we're going to do the same thing again continuing on to 3s i've got 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 and then i'm going to jump up to 4s right instead of 3d because you can see that's at a lower energy level and then i'm going to end up with 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 and then I've got all of my electrons over here as well. Now, if you were to look at forming an iron two plus ion, right, what we need to be able to do is remove two electrons, right, from the highest energy shell. But in this case, right, because we've got 4S there, we're going to go ahead and remove these two over here. Now, does that actually form a transition metal ion? Is iron going to be a transition metal? The answer is going to be yes, because you still have a partially filled D subshell over here. Now, moving on, right, here's two awkward examples that you need to be aware of. There's curious copper and then there's crafty chromium as well. That's how we remember it in chemistry. And these two actually have one electron in the 4S subshell and then the rest being added to the 3D subshell itself. So as before... With copper, it's got 29 electrons. With chromium, we know that's going to have 24 electrons in itself. Now, how do these actually fill up? Well, they follow the same step as before. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then I've got 19. And then we skip to the 3D subshow. So then I end up with 10 electrons in there. And so what I end up with is one two three four five six seven 
eight, nine, and then 10 all together as well. Now, an interesting thing about copper is, is that when copper actually loses one electron, you remove this electron over here. And so copper plus, right, that is not actually going to be a transition metal ion. But if we were to form, let's say, copper two plus, where we lose two electrons, let's say if I were to remove this electron over here, right, I would end up with a partially filled D subshell in that case. And so I know copper can actually form a transition metal ion itself. Now, what about in the case with chromium? Well, chromium itself, you've got 24 electrons. Again, you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you're going to have uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You're going to have 19. Again, one electron in the 4S subshell. And then you're going to have, right, 20. 21, 22, 23, and then you can have 24 there as well. So altogether, you can see that my D subshell over here is going to be half filled compared to copper, which is completely filled. And again, chromium can form transition metal ions. So let's say if you were to form chromium uh, 3 plus, which is a common one that you deal with, you'll remove this electron here and then these two electrons over here. Remember, the 4S comes off first. And so you can see over here, right, you've got a partially filled D subshell itself. So moving on, feel free to pause the video and have a go at the following task. And then once you're ready, feel free to resume. So yeah, we're asked to write the electron configuration for iron and iron 2 plus. Well, if that's the case, right, we know that iron itself has 26 electrons. And we also know, right, that it's going to be a D block element. So we're going to have our last electrons within the D subshell itself. So in that case, right, I would have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 and then i'm going to have 4s2 because that comes before 3d and then i'm going to have 3d6 itself as well now if that's the case right we know the following we know that when this forms an ion right we're going to lose two electrons to form ion 2 plus and so we end up with 24 electrons and so we've got 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2, 3p6, and then we're going to lose the 4s2 electrons, right? So in that case, we go straight to 3d, and then we end up with 6 itself. Well, how do I actually word this question? Well, I need to say that iron is a transition element. Why? Because it's stable iron actually forms a partially filled D subshell. So yeah, what about the electron configuration for scandium and scandium 3 plus? Well, we know scandium is going to have 21 electrons in itself. And we also know, right, that scandium, right, Right, which is not going to be a transition metal is not going to form a partially filled D subshell from that as well but what we'll do is is we'll write out the electron configuration anyway so I end up with the following of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2 and then we're going to end up with 3d1 as well and if we look at forming scandium 3 plus right which we do by removing three electrons we end up with 18 electrons overall and so i end up with 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 and then we've removed these three electrons over here. And so we've actually got an empty 3D subshell. So we know that this is not going to be a transition element itself as well. Now, how do we word that? Well, we say scandium is not going to be a transition element. Why? Because it's stable ion does not form a partially filled D subshell. So moving on then, right, there's four properties of transition elements that we need to be able to recall. One of them, which is about variable oxidation states, we know that the oxidation states of our transition metals can change. And you've looked at different examples of this in the redox topic. And let's go with an example of, let's say, chromium, right? Chromium can go from 2 plus by losing an electron, right, to form chromium 3 plus itself. We've got a half equation over here. And we've shown the electron on the right hand side as well. We can see we've got oxidation itself. We also know that transition metals, it can be reduced as well. So in that case, right, we've got an oxidation equation over here we know transition metals can be reduced so i can go with iron 3 plus for example that can gain an electron to form iron 2 plus itself as well so yeah you can see that we've got variable oxidation states here iron can be plus three in oxidation state or plus two chromium can be plus three or plus two in terms of its oxidation state as well now we also know that transition elements they can actually act as catalysts and we've seen different examples of this such as when we looked at the harbor process where we've got nitrogen react with three lots of hydrogen to form two lots of ammonia itself the catalyst that was actually used in this from GCSE and A level is going to be the iron catalyst itself as well and they normally work by a process called adsorption where your iron is going to actually hold your molecules of nitrogen 
against your molecules of hydrogen and cause them to fuse together as well lowering the activation energy itself right if we were to look at formation of colored ions itself we know that our transition metals right they're very uh, lovely to look at uh, we've looked at different examples at GCSE and at A level such as let's say copper 2 plus ions which is going to be blue right you've looked at let's say Fe3 plus Fe2 plus all of these different ions actually are going to have different colors so iron 2 plus is going to be green if you were to look at iron 3 plus that's going to be yellow and so on if we were to look at the complex ions themselves which is for another video our transition metals can actually form complex ions as well and that's in another video where we've got let's say something like iron and we've got right a bunch of different water ligands attached to it as well where we end up with something that looks like this where i've got oh2 over here and then i've got another oh2 over there and then at the other side i'm going to have h2o which looks like this and then i'm also going to end up with right on this side i'm going to end up with h2o over here and then again same thing top and bottom i end up with the following as well right we know the overall charge of this is going to be two plus and so we've got complex ion we've got a bunch of different ligands that are going to form dative covalent bonds with our iron two plus central metal ion itself as well and normally you've probably seen these already but a complex right we can show something's a complex by taking the compound itself which we've got iron and then we've got six lots of water ligands and then we put some square brackets around it to show we've got a complex and then we've got two plus charge oxidation state overall so moving on let's have a got the following task right i want you to pause the video and have a got the following so in this question we're asked which statement about the elements in the d block of period four of the periodic table is going to be correct well we start off with the first one chromium atoms have the electron configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 3d5 4s1 well if i were to look at a chromium um, atom itself right we know that chromium is going to have 24 electrons right and so if it has 24 electrons we know that the electron configuration would be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 and then because we've got crafty chromium we're going to have one electron in the s subshell and then the remainder in the 3d subshell itself as well and so we end up with 3d5 and that's actually going to be true so our answer in this case must be a let's look at b c and d and why they're going to be wrong now copper itself we know that has 29 electrons in total but copper plus ions that's going to have 28 electrons and so if i were to write out the electron configuration right remember we've got crafty chromium at the top for a and curious copper for b we've got 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 and then right we lose an electron because remember that has one electron in the 4s subshell and then we're going to end up with 3d10 itself remember that one electron loss to form copper plus ions is going to be from the s subshell which already has one electron inside of it so we know this is going to be incorrect fe2 plus ions contain three unpaired electrons well when we look at iron itself right iron actually has 26 electrons and so what i end up with is the following electron configuration of iron on its own so now that's the electron configuration of iron or about iron two plus well when we lose those two electrons itself we end up removing these two electrons over here and what we're now left with is a partially filled d subshell itself but the question is actually telling us that iron two plus contains three unpaired electrons if we look at the 3d subshell right what we actually end up with is one two three four five and then six electrons we've got one pair in total and four unpaired electrons so in that case we know that's going to be wrong for fe2 plus now if we were to look at the last one right scandium forms ions with different oxidation states that's going to be false because scandium actually only forms a three plus ion itself and that's got a plus three oxidation state so that's also going to be incorrect right so moving on uh, feel free to have a go at the following question pause the video and resume once you're ready to move on so in this question we're asked which property or properties is or are correct for a transition element a the element has atoms with a partially filled d subshell that's going to be false because it says atoms over here we don't want atoms we want to deal with ions with a partially filled d subshell the existence of more than one oxidation state in this compound that's going to be true because remember they've got variable oxidation states the formation of colored ions that's going to be true as well because remember your transition elements they can have lots of different colored ions in itself like copper 2 plus was blue iron 2 plus was green and so on so our answer in this case is going to be b and c itself
Moving on, feel free to have a go at the following question. So what is the reason that zinc is not classified as a transition element? Zinc atoms contain a full D subshell, right? That's going to be false because remember, we need to look at the actual ions itself, not the atoms. There are no zinc ions with an incomplete D subshell. We know that's going to be true, right? Because when we look at zinc, zinc forms zinc 2 plus only. And that zinc 2 plus is going to have a full D subshell. So our answer in this case is going to be B.